Hello, and welcome to the first lecture in the course where we're going to discuss how to create a book cover using Microsoft PowerPoint 2013. This is the introduction to the basics. What we're basically going to do in this lecture is create a white book cover. In subsequent lectures, we're going to learn how to fill that book cover with all kinds of graphics and text to make it look like a book cover. So let's begin by creating a new book cover, and we do that by picking File from the menu, and on the File tab, we select New. Now we're presented with a set of templates for presentations that we'd like to create. We don't want to create a presentation. In fact, we want a blank template, which is the template in the upper left-hand corner, which has nothing in it. Go ahead and double-click on that, and PowerPoint will create a new presentation for us with the, with the blank template. Now the problem is, is it isn't exactly blank. And you know, that's actually convenient because I wanted to talk with you about selection. And here we have something to select. I want you to notice what happens to my cursor uh, or my point here as I move the cursor from the left-hand side of the slide here over toward this dashed box. Now this dashed box is a text box in which text can be entered. As I get closer to it, suddenly it turns to this crosshairs when I get to the edge, the dashed edge, and then it turns into an eye beam when I get inside. This cursor shape is giving you a hint as to what's going on. If I click now when it's an eye beam, I'm editing the text in the box, and I can type things like test. Now, if I click once again as it's an eye beam, I'm positioning the cursor within the text. Okay? As I get closer to the edge of the text box, notice what happens to the cursor. It suddenly changes to a crosshairs. Now this is different. I'm not selecting in the text anymore. I'm selecting the text box. And notice when I left click that the entire box becomes solid rather than dashed. And these little squares show up. Now what are these squares? These allow me to resize the box or the shape that I have here. This is a standard PowerPoint thing. I can grab the edge, drag it in, and the box resizes. I can also grab the top resize box, and I can lower the size. I can also grab this little rotation thing, and I can rotate my box if I wanted rotated text or it positioned at some strange angle. And notice that things as I rotate and so on, I would it would be impossible for me to rotate this back into exactly even, but things in PowerPoint kind of snap to convenient locations. Uh, and you're going to find that more and more as we go through and edit things. Now the reason that I'm showing you this is that if I go and I use the I-beam select and I select in the text and hit the delete key, then the text disappears. But if I want to delete this box, which I do to not have it on the screen, I need to select the box and not the text. So there's a difference between text box selection and text selection. You need to be in the right mode depending on what you want to do. I want to get rid of this box. So I need to select the entire box by going into box selection, text box selection mode here, getting the crosshairs and clicking on it, making it a solid box, and then hitting the delete key. Now that text box is gone, it's replaced it with another one. I need to get rid of that. Now here I am in I-beam mode where I would be editing the text. I go towards the edge of the text box. It turns into a crosshair. At that point I can click. The text box becomes solid and I hit the delete key. And the text box is gone. Okay, this is, this is really important to understand. So we're gonna do it one more time. Here I am down in I-beam mode where I would be typing the text if I click. If I go toward the edge, it turns into the crosshair. I select the box. The box is selected. It's now solid. I hit the delete key and it's gone. Now I truly have a blank slide to work with. This is what I was working towards. The problem is, is that the slide is the wrong orientation and size. So we're going to fix that right away by going up to design. And when I click on design, I'm presented with a whole bunch of slide themes that I can select from. I don't want a slide theme. I've worked hard to get a blank slide going here, but I do want these options on the far right. B 
beginning with slide size. Let's click that pull down. Notice we can go standard or widescreen size, but these are still slide sizes. But if I go to custom size, here I'm given the option of specifying a width and a height for my slide. Hmm, interesting. That's exactly what we need. The problem is, is that the dimensions are in inches and the book cover that we need to create is specified in pixels. I need a 1600 by 2400 pixel book cover, 1600 pixels wide and 2400 tall, but I'm given inches here for the dimensions of my PowerPoint slide. Now it just so happens that it's easy to convert from pixels to inches because there's 96 pixels to the inch. Now I've already done the math for you. To get a 1600 pixel wide slide, I need to enter a slide width of 16.67 inches. And the slide height to get 2400 pixels would be 25. Now notice once I enter these dimensions, the slide orientation suddenly snaps to portrait. PowerPoint is recognizing that I'm specifying a portrait rather than a landscape slide. And now these are the right dimensions to create a 1600 by 2400 pixel slide. So I'll go ahead and I'll click OK. Now PowerPoint is asking the contents that are currently on the slide, what do you want to do with them? There aren't any. So it doesn't matter if you maximize or ensure fit. Click either button. Just don't click cancel to continue. And here we have our book cover. Now this is completely white, which is uninteresting, but it's exactly the correct dimensions that we want and it's the proper orientation and it contains nothing. So we can start working. If you know how to use PowerPoint, you can go nuts right now and then just follow the save options that I'm about to tell you and you'll be able to create your book cover. So as you're working on the book cover, what we want to do is we want to just save as if it's a PowerPoint presentation. So save as, pick a location. I happen to have a location that I've been saving my presentations in. So I'm going to go there to Camtasia Studio to how to make a book cover. And I'm going to name this Sample Slide 1. And we'll click Save. So I'm saving it just like it's a PowerPoint presentation because it is. And you want to save your work in progress that way so that you can edit individual elements of the slide. Now, when you're ready to actually display it as a book cover, we want to create a JPEG file, which is a graphics file. To do that, you go to File, Export, click Change Type of File. And notice it's giving you various file types, including image file types of a PNG, and we want a JPEG which is right here. So just double click on that. And PowerPoint has set us up with the same file name as the PowerPoint slide that we're saving and a type of JPEG. That's exactly what we want. And it's in the same directory we would, we've been saving our PowerPoint presentation in. So go ahead and save. And it's asking us, do you want to use uh, just this one slide or all slides? We only have one slide. So just this one slide. Okay, we've saved it as a JPEG file. We now have two files in that directory. Let's go down and look at those. Here they are. We have a sample slide JPEG file, which is the displayable book cover that we're creating. And we have a sample slide one Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, which is our work in progress. You're always going to maintain two types of files the work in progress editable version, which is the PowerPoint slides, and the JPEG representation, which is the displayable book cover image. So that's the basics. In the next few lectures, we're going to talk about how to actually create a book cover.